Yeah, we can have all three mounted at the same time. Okay. So it doesn't interfere with the uh, users have the uh, ability to access the file. Right. You just have to have different mount points. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So like you can mount the same mount point. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, you wouldn't be able to take some, like if you had a uh, uh, striped <coughs> system and you took a server offline, you'd lose half of your stripes. So that would affect your client at that point. You end up losing access to some files. Yeah, yeah. And so the mount point would show up like it's there, and then it would be like reading along, and all of a sudden, they, yeah, it could just barf. Yeah. And and so that's where that's why you want to do have some replication or aid or something going on in the background. Scott, I I looked it up. It's the Davies Meyer hash. Of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. <laughs> I know you're running this off from real. This I, I can't remember. Does Red Hat have super user SU? Mm -hmm. Debian has sudo. Yep, you can do both. Well, yeah. Both have both. Yeah. Okay. So what are you doing now? Okay. So now I'm telling it. So create this line. It's going to be called not distributed replicated. And it's being replicated every two servers. So it's not like, okay. like if you had six servers, it would be row one and two, row three and four, row five and six. It wouldn't be just like split them in the middle. Or just like two servers, two servers. That's it. it you know, it's like every two like every two servers. So the two is just how many servers are in a replication unit. Right. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Per. So there's going to be two copies. Right. Okay. <coughs> if we had five there and we had maybe 20 servers, would that cut down on the uh, the wasted space? Mm -hmm. Just like RAID 5 used to back when that wasn't obsolete? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes. So, so, so Lauren will start this and mount it, and you'll see that, um, that we'll have eight gigabytes of storage available. So remember, with our replicated, we we had four a uh, four-way replica, and so four gigs replicated four times. So you have four gigs of usable space. Yeah. In in the distributed volume, we had four gigs of unique storage times four. So we had 16 gigs, and then here, so Lauren will have have it mounted. Let's see what we come up with. Oh, you're gonna do my yeah my replicated. Now we'll do a DF, and it should show up as eight, right? Cool. Because it's four, and then a replica, four, and a replica. Mm -hmm. So eight-ish. Yeah, we're just doing it just because we can, you know, we got already have four VMs running in a laptop. So we, you know, ordinarily you don't want to have one of your servers be a client. We, you know, in production you would have like a fifth VM be the client that would that would, that would be the that would mount the file system. Sorry. Can you define uh, which ones are replicated? I was wondering that too. Yeah. Does it just choose for you? Um, so whenever you do the, the volume create command and you say replica two, the first two that you name, so we do rel one and rel two, okay. and then rel three and rel four. Okay. So if I wanted to do, if I want to replicate rel one and rel three, in the creation line, I would do rel one, rel three, uh, rel okay. two, rel four. Okay. Makes sense? You gave it an odd number of servers and you told it to. It would, it would, okay. it would, it would, it would, it would complain, yeah. Okay, so you got it created. Now what are we doing? So now I'm running the touch command to create the files. And then <coughs> if we do an ls to my data too. Yeah. Mm. It did wrong directly. Let me see. Yeah, let's see what we've got. Touch wrong. Maybe we, maybe we missed something when we created It wasn't in the ETC directory. Oh, touch. Oh, yeah. What directory are you in? 
Show, show one and two, Lauren. Actually, one and two should be. No. Oh, okay. One or two are replicated. Yeah. So, so here, here do you see here? Yeah. One, two. So my, mine should be repl replica two. So here we're saying the replica two would be row one, and row two would be the first replication pair. Three and four would be the next one. So if I did, if I had six servers and I said replica three, it would be one, two, three, and then one, two, three. Yeah, so there, there are two things that are going on. One is, do you experience a disk drive failure and you pop out the drive and you put a new one in? Hopefully you're doing RAID. Yeah. Right? And that RAID would rebuild. Yeah. Then, what if what if that whole server burns down? Right. Right? You pull that server out, you put a new one, you, you install Gluster on it, you call it same host name, then you do a peer probe, you attach it into the system, yeah. and then, then you actually do a repair, and that repair will, will have it... Bring so those three files out. Here, that'll go back and reduplicate any files that were missing off of other uh, mirrors. Exactly. Yeah. So you can that with the virtual that I, what, demonstrate that to see what would happen if you work one and rebuild it. it um, I, we could we could power off. How about I'll power off? Or we could power off one of the VMs, one of the get, uh, one of the guests, and you'll see that the volume is still up and up and alive. I just don't want to trash it. No, no, you know, no, that's, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wait to the end. We'll yeah. Play. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Each one of these iterations, did you get rid of what you had there before, or do we have all those? They're all still there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so when, when uh, Warren could do. Uh, uh, on row one, you could do a, 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 a volume info, or, or actually, she could do it on any of the systems. But do do uh, uh, or volume uh, status rather, right? Oops. Um, actually, it's volume info. There we go. So, so you know, here we have our distributed replicated. Here we have the replicated, and then we have the distributed that scrolled off the screen. And they're all there, and we can mount them all simultaneously. And they're all using the same data space. So, if yes. one of them, one of them starts mm -hmm. filling up, does it show the other ones? Yes. Decrease. Uh, no, no. They, it'll. They all think they've got the full thing. Right. And and so in reality, you know. In, in an enterprise environment, you know, you're going to have dedicated storage for each of the bricks. Right. 
right? Yeah. Well, and but I'm, or or you got to you know think about that and you know plan for that. Okay. Yes. So I have a question for Lauren. Yeah. Is this your first presentation to? Um, is this? <laughs> now, I'm sure she knows a couple geeks her own age. Is this a probably presentation to, to all adults? I'm not all as a geek. Yeah. Very yeah. good. Yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed with you. I want to give her an award. I I don't come to all these meetings, but I've never seen anyone take a single picture. This poor girl has been taking slash. Nobody takes a picture of me when I present. Girl hat now. All right. Good to have new voices. That's why. Absolutely. We'll try to encourage that. It helps me please watch it. Can you give next month's presentation too? <laughs> so let's 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 do. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. What's the plus? What are the pluses of doing this? Of, of doing luster? Yeah. I mean, well, it's a dumb question, but is it faster? Yeah. So so there there are a couple things. One is with if you start thinking about. Um, you know, everybody's going to the cloud, right? And and you're not going to call Amazon up and say, hey, I, I, give me your address, I want to mail you an EMC file or a NAS file. And and so you know, there, you know, so to get physical storage out in the cloud isn't practical usually. So what but what you can do is you can do software based storage. So that's one of the big things with Gloucester, is software based storage. But as Lauren said, it, you can run on a physical system, a virtual machine, or um, out in the cloud, and and it's the same skill set. So whenever you train your staff, whether they've learned how to use it on a cloud or on VMs like Lauren did, you know she could do this on a physical server because it's the same same tool set, same command set. The other thing that you want to think about is it, you know, should uh, you know, are you going to wake up tomorrow morning and say, let's throw out all our EMC, all our NetApp, we're going Gluster, and and everything's going to be great. The reality is, is that. Each of those storage technologies have their own sweet spots and their pluses and minuses. And so the sweet spot with Gluster is by it is that it's meant for you know like like Lauren said unstructured data, big data, very low cost data. Um, like if you go to buy an EMC or or to a lesser degree a NetApp, that's usually like you're paying a, a first class ticket for that storage. Very very expensive, but you get premium features with that price. But for a lot of people, they may not they just may want to have raw you know, crazy capacity that isn't possible. And actually, in, in the next case study, I'll talk about that real quick. Um, yeah, let's do that. Does that, does that help? Well, it does. I don't want to uh, take over the meeting here, but you're hitting on something I really need here. So let me ask you this question. I've got a, I've got a cluster. I've got a high-performance computing cluster. Mm -hmm. So I've got 1,000 nodes, and each of them have spindles in them. Yep. Okay? Now, we put all our storage outside of that, yep. but we do have these spindles that are kind of wasted. And we have some applications that are really I.O. sensitive, so we have to give them little scratch areas on all those spindles. But we can't really afford to put a lot on each one. You know, what would happen if I took all of them over the Infiniband and turned it into one large cluster yep. for scratch? So it doesn't even have to be backed up or, or replicated or anything like that. Theoretically, those I can see some problems. Would I be shooting myself in the foot? By, would I be losing that I/O speed of a local disk if I did it? Would I be breaking even, or would I be coming ahead? Because I've got multiple places I could go to write and read. You know, the first one to answer back. Yeah, and breaking even is what was in that I.O. Breaking even versus your meta that you guys are using. Well, we have we have we have we have a Panasis system externally. We have NFS. Uh, other such things. That's for where the big data goes. But from scratch, like doing FDA codes and analytics, it's really important that it can get to that disk real fast for scratch only stuff. So we give them local spindles, but it wants more. Yep. And there's enough in the whole oh, cluster okay. to feed anybody in the end. But sometimes one large job will land on one node, dang, there's not enough scratch there. Yeah. When I shoot myself in the foot, if I took it scratch and all the other thousand scratches, we did the one humongous cluster. Your, your overall average speed would go down. Yes. Yeah, so uh, yeah. How much more? I mean, is it a lot more? More than I would if I just put it on the enterprise. You could probably architect such that you had a few different tiers of right. scratch storage so you could figure out what you need. Okay. But, yeah. That's boring. All right. Yeah. yeah and and the other thing, be. the way 
at least from uh, the way Red Hat looks at it, from you know, and we've thought about this, where it's you know, you know, and and I, I'm I'm I would like to see it happen, where your compute and your storage are co-located, right? Because the moment you go to the network, right. or you know, you're 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 it's a performance right, thing, exactly. right? Um, but today, the way it, the Red Hat storage from a supported product standpoint is, is that you have your compute in one box and your storage in another set of boxes. They're not they're not in the same space. And so, it, you know, so it's not going to be co-located. You could probably do some stuff with the .org and, you know, and, and maybe that will work great for you. Um, but today, it's, we treat the, the storage as an appliance and, and sort of as, as a separate thing. And then you use the, the mount to be able to get to it. And, and so, yeah, that's sort of the way we're doing that. Just a, a couple of questions for you in your application. Um, how big are your scratch files that you're generating with the compute? Uh, it could be usually no more than a couple of gigs at the most. So your your systems don't actually have two gigs or three gigs of scratch on their local. No, they could be multiple of those files. Oh, your compute a single compute server could be making fifty two or maybe twelve or something of those files because you don't have a really yeah because you don't have a, a workflow system for that. Uh, if you're running InfiniBand. You can probably get 30 megs a second out of most commodity drives that you're going to be hitting. And if you're running a fin InfiniBand, I think you have you know, the, the speed of God's left hand if you need it to get to those other disks. Yeah. It looks like it would work on Gluster only because you're leaning on a ridiculously fast interconnect as a crutch for that. I really think yeah. it would work. And, and that's a good point. Not if you're going fast Ethernet, though. I mean, that'd be a different story. But you know, I don't think you're going to be able to saturate what you're looking at. Yeah, and and that and that sort of ties into Steve's question earlier is that, you know, maybe if you did it with RDMA, you know, using InfiniBand, you know, that maybe that could. And so, you know, I know, you know, we, we want to have the storage as close as possible to the compute, but maybe RDMA could help bring it a little bit closer, even though. Right now, looking at throwing in another uh, additional node and throwing some PCI Express uh, SSD yep. yeah. in there. Serving that over the InfiniBand and stack definitely. You'll probably get InfiniBand speed. How, how fast is your InfiniBand? 10 gig or 40 gig? 